Broadcasts of Hiki no are made possible by the support of viewers like you. Mahalo and by Bank of Hawaii Foundation, investing in Hawaii's future by promoting collaboration, critical thinking, and other 21st century skills through Hiki no. Kamehameha Schools, empowering Hawaiian keiki to explore, discover, and inspire. ABC Stores, a local company helping to transform education and develop Hawaii's workforce through bold learning initiatives like Hiki no. Next on Hiki no, stories from across our island chain. <laughs> Discover a place where goats' voices are heard and humans respond. The Dancing Goat Sanctuary on Hawaii Island. Take some simple steps towards developing your own personal style. Find out how to get started on using a universal language that uses no sound. Meet a teacher who has turned a sustainable garden into a special place of learning. Learn the proper way to make a longtime favorite island food. Meet a fitness coach who overcame his own personal struggles to become a motivating force in people's lives. And find out how a local artist reconnected with his native culture. Stay tuned for these stories and find out why students who created them felt compelled to explore these particular topics. All on this episode of Hiki no. Can Do. We're here on the campus of Konawaina High School, home of the Wildcats, on the leeward side of the Big Island of Hawaii. Konawaina High School collaborated with Konawaina Middle School on a story for Hiki no. We decided to tell the story about a goat farm that takes in orphaned and abused animals. The farm also teaches youth about sustainability and how to take care of the animals. We wanted to show how compassion for the animals teaches lifelong lessons. Here is our story, Goat Sanctuary. <laughs> On the big island of Hawaii, an organic farm is dedicated to helping abused, orphaned, and abandoned goats. We had a neighbor who brought us a baby goat in the bottom of a bucket. And the dancing goat sanctuary was born. We had never met or worked with goats before and it captured all of our hearts here on the farm. And so Sarina, we give her credit for starting the dancing goat sanctuary. Sarina became the first of many rescues at the sanctuary that has provided a safe environment where neglected animals can thrive. Some of our largest rescues have actually been um, from folks in the community who have been to the farm and they recognize when an animal is in need and needs help and they will give us a call and sometimes people just show up at the gate and um, we work with them to help them find a safe, secure place for the animals that often they, ca they care very deeply for. Shauna Gunnarsson mentors youth in an after-school program called Kahana no Eo. The students learn about sustainability, self-determination, and how to treat animals compassionately. Good enough? Most of the goats here are pretty nice, as long as you don't trigger them by touching them on their uh, nose, because that, because when goats fight with their horns, they usually hit like right here and here. I want students to understand how their actions impact others. And with animals, we can see this very clearly because animals are very good about giving us feedback to our actions. So for example, when students come out to the farm and they're waving their arms and they're being very loud, the animals have a very obvious reaction to those loud noises and those uncontrolled actions. During my time on Miss Gunnarsson's farm, I discovered that my energy levels were way too high for the animals and sometimes the other people on the farm to cope with. Like whenever I would approach an animal, they would either scamper away or like leave the area slowly so as to not cause my energy levels to spike higher. That made me realize that sometimes you need to be calm and collected and disciplined in life in order to get what you wanted. And so that applies to all areas and that's what I learned from the farm. Students not only learn how to interact with animals, but that animals have social relationships that humans are not aware of. Visitors who spend time with the animals learn why animals have developed particular behaviors. Someone, so they thought he was trying to be aggressive, but he wasn't. He just wanted to play. Mahatma Gandhi once said, 
the true measure of any society can be found in how it treats its most vulnerable members. The Dancing Goat Sanctuary emphasizes trust, understanding, and patience, setting a path for both animals and youth to build lasting connections. This is Xavier Chung from Konawaina High School for Hiki no. Now, let's open the Hiki no archives for a story on another animal sanctuary, as told by a high school student at Kamehameha Schools, Maui. Hidden away on a two-acre parcel in Haiku, Maui, lays the home of Sylvan Schwab and his guests. But they are not your typical guests. They are all orphans or injured animals. East Maui Animal Refuge, this is Sylvan. Can I help you? The East Maui Animal Refuge, more affectionately known as the Boo Boo Zoo, is home to over 50 cats, 50 birds, 25 deer, 16 goats, two horses, two pigs, one cow, and an endless amount of fowl. I can't think of any animal that is on the island that we have not had here at one time or another because we take in anything if it's in a life-threatening situation. Each animal comes to the refuge with a story, some more interesting than others, such as the case of Baby, the blind cow. She was born blind, which is why we took her in. She was already named Baby when she came. Um, but um, along with pretty much all of the animals that we have here, they come because they're in some kind of life-threatening situation. Um, this is Gabriel. Gabriel is our oldest goat. As you can see, he's really scrawny um, because if he was a person, he'd be about 95 years old. And uh, Gabriel came because he was attacked as a little goat by dogs, and his neck was torn open and his ear was split. Uh, so Gabriel's been here since he was a little guy. So what motivates a person to turn their home into an animal sanctuary? Well, it turns out that the animals aren't the only ones with a special story. We started out just doing this because when I met my wife, Susie, um, I found out shortly after I met her that she had cancer and that it was not treatable uh, through allopathic medicine on, on the mainland. So she basically came to Maui to die. And part of her treatment was occupational therapy to have a drive to survive. So when I found out she had cancer, I started collecting sick little critters for her. And that's how the Boo Boo Zoo started. And over 30 years now, it's evolved into this. And Susie has been clear of cancer for almost 30 years now. And now we've saved the life of the animals who in fact helped save her life. Even with Susie being cancer free, the Schwabs continue to share their home and give their love unconditionally to injured and unwanted animals. Recently, Sylvan was denied a renewal of his wildlife rehabilitation permit. Sylvan and the Department of Land and Natural Resources are currently working together to resolve these problems, so the Booba Zoo can and will continue its mission. But we still have this need to care for animals, and we established the Booba Zoo as a no-kill facility. We're going to work it out. One way or another, we have to work it out because we have to do what we do. We have to take care of animals in distress. Sylvan credits the animals for saving Susie's life. But one could say the credit goes both ways. No matter how you look at it, the Boo Boo Zoo is truly a home built with love. From the East Maui Animal Refuge in Haiku Maui, I'm Nikki Davis reporting for Hiki No. Hiki no is on Instagram. For show updates and a peek behind the scenes, follow us on Instagram at Hiki no Can Do campus of Kapa'a High School on the east side of our beautiful garden island of Kauai, we decided to produce the upcoming video to encourage creativity in the way you dress because we feel the way you present yourself can boost self-confidence and individuality. Here's our video, personal style. Fashion is a way of expression. Finding your personal style can boost your confidence and individuality. Personal style does not need to be defined in one word. Wearing what you love is a style in itself. <laughs> Along with what you love, being comfortable in your style is key. 
Wearing comfortable items can contribute to feeling good and looking good. Balancing function and fashion can be done by prioritizing comfort and style. Additional items like wearing jewelry, a hat, applying makeup, styling hair, and choosing specific shoes can enhance your look. Accessorizing completes your look and adds depth to your style. There are many ways to create your personal style, not limited to popular stores and online shopping. Of course, with confidence, function or fitness can precede fashion. Upcycling is one way to create something new from something old. Not only are you customizing your clothing, but you are also being eco-friendly. Sewing your own clothes is another great way to enhance your personal style, creativity, and resourcefulness. Being around friends who are kind is key to becoming confident in yourself and in your personal style. This doesn't mean you should all dress alike. Remembering to have fun and be yourself will boost your happiness and confidence. This is Juliana Tampas from Kapaa High School for Hiki No. And now, students from HP Baldwin High School on Maui show us how to get started on a language that uses hands and facial expressions, but no sounds. About 15% of people in America are born deaf or have suffered from some level of hearing loss that affects communication. People with severe hearing loss communicate using a series of standardized hand signals known as American Sign Language, or ASL. Reaching out to these members of the community by using sign language is one way to show kindness and compassion. Here is one easy conversation starter in ASL. To say, how are you, place both fists together with thumbs up and rolled outwards to say, how. Next, point at the person you're addressing to say, you. Remember that facial expressions are crucial when talking to a person who is hearing impaired. Now that you have started a conversation, here are some possible responses. To say, good, place the fingers of your right hand to your mouth and bring them down, face up, on your left hand. To say, bad, begin with the same, but end with your right hand facing down in your left hand. Now that we have shown you the basics, get out there and connect with the deaf community in your area. And if you're interested in learning more about ASL, visit www.nad.org. This is Kristen Takamiya from HP Baldwin High School for Hiki no. Our next story takes us to Waianae Intermediate School in West Oahu, where students tell of a garden that nurtures plants and people. It's relaxing coming to the garden. I feel calm and I get solitude in here and it's real peaceful. White and I Intermediate School special education teacher Randy Florendo spends a lot of his school days outside of the classroom. And quiet and can just um, get in my zone working in the garden. And when I bring the kids in here, it is exciting. The Aloha Aina Garden in the back of the campus has a greenhouse with many different kinds of plants such as taro, eggplant, onion, bananas, and tomatoes. However, the garden is more than just a place with plants. It's a place that engages students. When I first started the garden, just like, oh, are we going to garden today? I said, I would say, yeah, we're going to the garden. They'll be excited. And other than that, they wouldn't, they wouldn't want to come to school. So in one part, it does motivate some of my students to come to school because they just love the garden, like working outdoors. The garden is special to me because it's like a second home and it gives me something to look forward to going to school for. The garden wasn't always like this. Three years ago, it was overgrown. The aquaponic system wasn't working. All you could see was just a big area of weeds when it first started. Then slowly we made one small section of our garden and we kind of was successful with a couple crops we was growing back then, kale, tomato, eggplant, it was small. Even now, keeping the area clear is challenging. Because the weeding is the hardest part, part of the garden. That's the most difficult part. Controlling the weeds and actually get, trying to get rid of the weeds is just it's an endless battle. Watch out the kalo, no, no, no damage the kalo. The care given to the garden has allowed not just the plants to thrive, but the students and teachers as well. It makes me feel 
good because like putting in work and I feel like we're giving back to the community with stuff that we grow here. The majority of the time they enjoy coming to the garden and, and they become better people. They become better people. This is Lexi Hill Cox from White and I Intermediate School for Hikino. Next, students from Pomaka'i Elementary School on Maui show us that there's a lot more to making musubi than you might think. Japanese immigrants came to Hawaii to work on the plantations. To help ease their move, they brought their culture with them, and many have become local traditions. One thing they introduced that has become extremely popular is the musubi, also known as onigiri. Onigiri are Japanese rice balls that are commonly found in a triangular shape. Many people in Hawaii love easy on the go snacks like musubis. If you want easy snacks that you can take anywhere, then a musubi could be right for you. Here are the ingredients you will need. Rice, nori, water, and your hands. Have an adult help you cook the rice. Wash your hands and leave them wet so the rice does not stick to your hands. Take one third cup of cooked rice and mold it into a triangle by holding it in one hand and cupping your other hand over the top. Do not form it into a circle because it could mean bad luck. And if it is too hard to form with your hands, you may use a mold. This is where you can get creative. You could add furekake, nori, ume, or salt for your own musubi. Once you are all packed, you can take it to go. Find a great place to enjoy and share your musubi. In Japan, if it tastes good, they say... Oishi! This is Kayla Wada from Pomaikai Elementary School for Hikino. We're here on campus of H.P. Bolden High School in the island of Maui. The following story is about a gym owner named Justin Yanagiro who overcame his very own physical and mental obstacles to become the highly energetic and very motivational person he is today. We decided to do this story because we wanted to take a look into the eyes of an enthusiastic person who overcame his dark past and now spreads the idea of positivity throughout the Maui community. Here's our story of Justin Yanagiro. Dude, I like that, man. Positivity is like my drug, man. Ta, li, ta, li. And then as you express your body, mm. Justin, uh, he's, he's a great coach, man. He's real charismatic, good job, good job. real just like he gets everyone going, awesome, you know. Man. I think Justin has a lot of energy and he Do brings a lot contest. to the gym. He's kind of like, he's super positive, like in your face positive stretch, stretch, stretch and really out. motivated. Stretch it out, stretch it out. Located in Wailuku, Maui is personal trainer and motivational speaker Justin Yanagita, who owns and operates his gym, Yanagita okay. Fitness. Good, good, good. <laughs> Many people who start because they were athletically gifted or they had a natural talent for exercise or athletics or sports, I came from the complete opposite side of the spectrum where I was 40 pounds overweight, I had chronic asthma, and I had a liver disease where I was told I'm not going to live to see my 30th birthday. I was just so beaten, battered, destroyed in every sense a human can be and I almost committed suicide twice. And uh, overcoming that depression was probably the most challenging thing I've ever done because I had no sense of worth, no value, no self-love, no self-respect. And uh, that, overcoming that struggle right there just manifested into me being hyper grateful. After relentless bullying and listening to others think, Justin began to train his mind and body to become immune to what others thought with meditation and practice of gratitude by appreciating the little things in life and being thankful for everything and everyone around him. Being able to overcome my own physical, emotional, and mental struggles helped to inspire me to want to help other people. Today, Justin speaks to educate people to find their purpose and what they want to do in life. He also speaks to people seeking to have a healthy lifestyle. I realized I wanted to help people since I was a kid. All these different things amounted to being very, very empathetic. And by being able to be able to empathize with others, I'm truly able to connect on a heart-to-heart -heart basis. I realized by speaking to people's hearts, we can change their lives. I realize no matter how many people it is, if I can just 
speak to one person and change one life, I know I did my purpose there. This is Serene Morales from H.P. Baldwin High School for Hikino. Fighting sickness with fitness never sleeps. We're here on the campus of Maui High School in Kahului on the island of Maui. We decided to tell the following story of Mr. Philip Sabato, a local artist who, after moving to the mainland, found his passion for painting Hawaiian art. We chose this story because we felt it would share his central message, that life is like a cycle and everybody has a purpose. Here's our story, Kuliana. To be whole as a person, you need to be whole with nature. Art, to many, is a universal part of life, something that is as elusive as it is beautiful. All art fights against time, but most is forgotten as the years carelessly flow by. To Wailuku Maui-based artist Philip Sabato, art is just another extension of Hawaii. Hawaiian culture, um, it, it, because it's in the aina, it's in under the ground. The culture begins under the ground. And then Tutupele comes up, right? Erupts to remind us this is where we are. And, and so why is Hawaiian art so important? I think because we have a story to tell the world um, about how the people live. Period. That could be me. <laughs> In 1977, Philip Sabato was able to leave Maui and ended up working as a senior art director for the Bristol Myers Corporation in Los Angeles, California. And so from here, I was doing TV commercials, I was doing billboards, I was doing all the things you do for other people. And, and here was this hula dancer in Kahiko from Molokai that when I seen that, I realized I need to paint Hawaiian. Just paint me? <laughs> <laughs> from the performance of the Molokai hula dancer, Sabato realized that he needed to go back to his roots. He decided to move back to the island of Maui to start his career with his passion to paint native Hawaiian art. The great um, goddesses, gods that Hawaii used to have, they all had a purpose. And I think that's where we kind of forget sometimes our purpose. Yeah, so we call it kuleana, right? And that's what we always have to remember. We're here because we have a responsibility to try to bring back things. It's gonna be hard. Regardless, after decades of dedicated artistry, Sabato found his true kuleana. Kids that I teach here, that they go to college, they go to art school. I've had a couple that went to art school already, they came back and they're in the art. The impact I want to make is more about what is the next generation? What are they going to do? So it's whatever, this is the reason why I came back Hawaii, is really to give back what I know. So with that, again, it's almost like the ahupua'a, you create this cycle, so it just keeps churning. It gets, it doesn't die. With strong strokes and strong memories, Perhaps now, the new artists of Hawaii will remember not to forget. This is Hunter Nohoi Kaika from Maui High School for Hikino. Well, we've come to the end of this episode of Hikino. Remember, all of these stories were written, shot, and edited by students like us. We hope you enjoyed watching them as much as we enjoyed sharing them with you. Be sure to tune in next week for more proof that Hawaii students Hikino can do.
broadcasts of Hiki no are made possible by the support of viewers like you. Mahalo, and by Bank of Hawaii Foundation, investing in Hawaii's future by promoting collaboration, critical thinking, and other 21st century skills through Hiki no. Kamehameha Schools, empowering Hawaiian keiki to explore, discover, and inspire. ABC Stores, a local company helping to transform education and develop Hawaii's workforce through bold learning initiatives like Hiki no.